Hello mathematicians. Uh, today's objective is students will be able to add and subtract polynomials. Okay, um, in order to uh, master today's objectives we need to recall some, some knowledge that we already have but this is really really important. These two problems right here, problem uh, one and problem two, look very very similar. However, there is a huge, huge difference, and that is the operation um, between these two terms. For this first one, we're multiplying, okay? And recall that the rules for multiplying, we don't care if they have the same variable raised to the same exponent, okay? We can just multiply these. So in this, we would multiply the coefficients. Remember, the rules are multiply the coefficients. So 3 times 4 is 12. Multiply the coefficients and add the exponents. So this is x to the first, don't forget that hen one. So it would be 12x to the third power. Okay. However, on this one, when we are adding and subtracting, we always have, whenever you see addition or subtraction, the first thing that should come to your mind is like terms. Okay. They have to have, remember the two rules, exact same variable or variables raised to the exact same power. So this one has an x, this one has an x, but this one's to the first power, this one's to the second power. Therefore, we cannot combine these. They're not like terms. So the answer would stay the same. It would stay 3x squared plus 4x. Okay? Can't combine them. Okay? So for the next two objectives, for today's objective, we're going to be working with the addition and subtraction. So we ought to be thinking like terms. And then in the next objective, we're going to be working with multiplying. Okay, So let's go on and do some examples. All right, example one. And I'm going to teach you um, using two different methods. Um, and I honestly don't care which one you use. Uh, find the one that works best for you. It's just a, two different ways of organizing your work when you solve these. Okay. If we look at this first one, okay, we have parentheses around a bunch of stuff plus parentheses around three different terms. Okay? Now, when we do this, we are adding the like terms in this first kind of expression of terms with the like terms in the second kind of expression of terms. So if we look at this first one, our 3x squared can be added with our negative 7x squared. And I still think it's a good idea to go through and to separate these. That way you don't forget signs. Okay? So the first way that we can organize our work is to just show it this way, where I'm doing 3x squared and then plus and then the negative 7x squared. Okay? And then what comes, so I started with the highest exponent because remember descending order from the last objective, um, we're going to have the highest exponent first. So now I look at the, what's the next highest exponent and that is, oh, just an x raised to the first power. So what are the two terms that are x to the first power? Well, I have negative 4x plus, remember don't, that plus came from right here, plus my positive 2x. Okay, that 2x was just right there. Okay, and then you have your just constants, your regular numbers. Remember, regular numbers are just called constants because they never change. So you had 8 uh, plus negative 5. Okay, and all we're doing right here is showing what like terms we are adding together. All right, so 3 plus negative 7 will give me negative 4 x squared. Um, you notice I didn't put signs um, in between these because we don't know what the signs are going to be until we determine whether it's a positive or negative. Okay, so this one, negative 4 plus 2 will get me negative 2. So because it's negative, I can just write, so negative 2, that negative I'm just going to write as subtraction. So negative 2x and then 8 plus negative 5 will give me a positive 3, so I'm just going to write plus 3. Okay? This is my simplified answer, and I know that because there are no more like terms. You have x squared right here, 
you have x to the first, and then you have just a constant. So that's how I know this is my final answer. You just added two polynomials. Okay. If you have questions, make sure you hit pause now and put question marks and write out what your exact question is. Otherwise, let's go on to the next example. Okay, um, again, actually this is the same example. I'm just going to show you a way um, that you could organize your work differently. Again, I don't care which way you organize your work, the first method or this method that I'm about to show you. Find whatever way works best for you. Okay, first thing I'm still going to do is I like to always separate my terms. That way I do not forget about the signs. Okay, so then I have 3x squared, and I need to add the negative 7x squared. So the other way that you can show your work is basically I just kind of call it stacking the terms. So 3x squared plus, and again, I got this plus, and make sure you do this arrow. I got this plus from right there, and then negative 7x squared. Okay, And then what's the next one? Your x is, right? So you have negative 4x plus, again, that plus came from in between. Um, let's see, what was it for? Oh, 2x. And then you had the 8 plus the negative 5. Okay, again, just a different way of showing your work. You're going to get the exact same answer. Okay, negative 4x squared. And this would be negative 2x, so I'm going to write minus 2x. And this would be positive 3, so I'm going to write plus 3. Okay, so again, either one of these methods you can use, you're going to get the same answer. Again, it's just a different way of organizing your work, is it? All right, so let's Okay, so here is example two. You notice there is one big, big difference between these, and that is the operation going on between the polynomials. Okay, so this is subtracting. Okay, it's really, really important that we pay attention to what operation is going on in between. Okay, we're going to use the same process on this. I'm just going to show uh, the first method that I use, so 3 in First of all, I should separate, that way I don't forget my signs. Okay, so I start with, actually I made a mistake already. Okay, I like to always start with the highest exponent because that's what's going to come first at the end anyway, right? So what's the highest exponent that I have? So let's put that key point here um, to start with um, largest exponent. And again, the reason why, if you don't, you're just going to have to rearrange the terms to be in descending order like we did yesterday. Okay, But if you start with it, then you don't have to rearrange at the end. So my highest exponent is n to the third power. So I have a positive 12 n to the third power Okay, minus, what's the n to the third power over here? Well, it's a positive 4 n to the third power. Okay. Now, into the second power. And again, I'm not putting my operation in between because I don't know whether it's positive or negative yet. Into the second power. So I have a 3 um, in to the second power. Um, and then there's no into the second power over here, right? So if there's nothing in the second polynomial, you can just do minus 0 because there's not one over there. All right, now we have into the first power. So into the first power, I have a positive 5n, and then minus a negative 7n. Okay, um, and then I think that is it for our terms. We've accounted for all the terms. Okay, so now I can simplify. So these are like terms. So 12 minus 4 is 8n to the third power. Um, 3n squared minus 0 is just going to give me that positive, so plus 3n squared. And then, so here's where it gets kind of tricky because you have the 5n minus negative 7n. Well, what happens when you have minus a negative number? It turns into a plus positive. Okay, So now I have a 5n plus a positive 7n, which would get me the... Let me change pen colors here. Would get me a positive 12n. So it's going to be plus 
in. Okay. And this would be your final answer because let's check a few things. Before you circle your final answer, you should always check to make sure that's simplified and in the correct order. So I have an n to the third power, n to the second power, n to the first power. So there are no like terms that I can combine and they are in the correct descending order with the highest exponent going down to the lowest exponent. So this is how I know that is my final answer. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to create a new slide. Okay, this is the same example, example two, but I'm gonna show you again a different way of doing this. And I actually really prefer this way and I would strongly recommend that you use this way because I think it will, I've found throughout the years of teaching it really helps students avoid mistakes, okay? Now, one way that we can look at this is instead of saying, oh, this is subtraction, I know that if there's parentheses there is, and there's not a number in front, there's a hidden one in front of this parentheses, okay? What can I do with a, this negative one or minus one outside of these parentheses? Well, I can distribute it, okay? And when you distribute, okay, that's when the signs are gonna change. So a negative one times a negative seven will get me a positive seven in, okay? And then a negative one times a four, positive four will get me a negative four in to the third power, okay? So now that I've distributed that, Okay, it actually turns in now. I've distributed the negative. I got rid of the negative. So I'm going to just rewrite this. 3n squared plus 12n to the third power plus 5n. And again, here's the key. Here's why I like this method. Because once you distribute that negative 1, okay, that negative 1, you're done with it. It actually turns into a positive. So now you're back to just adding polynomials, okay? And I actually want us to have this as a key point that we, okay, so get this down in your notes as a key point, okay? That we, key point, we always want to add polynomials, okay? So what did we do? do? So distribute, distribute the negative one. Okay, and that'll get rid of that subtraction. If you distribute that negative one, it gets rid of subtraction, changes it to addition. But here's the most common mistake. Make sure that when you distribute that negative one, you are changing all the signs, you notice this was a, a minus and it turned into a what? A positive. This was a plus 4n and it turned into a minus. Because when you multiply something by negative one, all it does is change the sign. That's it, okay? Another example. Um, actually, I want you guys to do this. So here's another example, example three. I want you guys to explain the number one mistake students will make on this. So in your notes, you should have exactly this right here, what I'm putting in, in quotation marks. It should say, the number one mistake students will make is, and then you gotta finish that sentence, okay? And if you see two possible mistakes, because i just looking at this, I see two, go ahead and write those two possible mistakes, okay? So go ahead and hit pause, and then we'll share these out in class. But go ahead and hit pause, and uh, make sure you finish that sentence or two on the most common mistake that students will make on this problem. Okay, um, you should be finished with your sentence or two by now. So now we're actually going to solve this. Um, I'm not going to tell you what the most common mistake is because we'll share that out in class. So remember, the steps on this one, um, put in that negative one, okay, and then separate these terms. Uh-oh, what's in front of this x right here? Well, we know it's a hidden one, right? Um, I'm going to separate these terms too. So now I'm going to distribute this negative one to each of these terms, okay? Did I do anything with this first expression, this first polynomial? No. So I'm just gonna rewrite that. Change back to black here. So the first one did not change. It's gonna be three x to the fourth power 
minus 3 plus 6x. And then this is going to change. So once you distribute that negative 1, it turns into addition. And my new polynomial, well, negative 1 times a positive 4 will get me negative 4x to the 4th power. Negative 1 times a positive 1 will get me a minus 1x. And then a negative 1 times a negative 7 will get me a positive 7. Okay. So now I can go ahead and add my like terms. Again, I'm going to separate to make sure that I do not forget the signs. So I have a 3. I'm starting with the largest exponent, which is to the 4th. So I have 3x to the 4th. Um, and then let's see, plus negative 4 x to the fourth. Okay, now x to the third. Do I have any x to the third? No, I don't. So what comes next? Just x. So my x terms, I have a positive 6x plus, again, I get that plus from right there, uh, negative 1x. Oops. So negative 1x. And then I have just my constants left. So I have a negative 3 plus a positive 7. Okay. So now I'm going to combine these like terms. So it would give me negative 1x to the 4th. Or do you have to show that negative 1? No, you can, on a test, it might just be an answer like this, negative x to the 4th. And then plus 5x. And then it would be plus this is your final answer. No more like terms and in descending order. Um, I want you to add that key point. So I want you to add final answer check. Okay, so once you think you have the final answer, here are the things that you're checking. First thing you're checking is any more like terms. Clearly, if there are like terms in your answer, you're not done. It's not simplified. And then the second thing is descending. Descending order. Okay. And that's just your highest exponents come first. All right. Um, here are three practice problems for you. So I want you guys to um, hit pause, write these down, solve these problems. I just do one at a time to make sure you have room. So solve one at a time, and then once you're all done, um, the answers are on the next page, which I'll show you next. So before you come to class, you should make sure that you can do these three problems. And if you can, you're in good shape, okay? So go ahead and hit pause now, and when you finish, you can hit play again, and the answers will be on the next slide. Okay, here are the answers. If you made any mistakes, you need to find and correct your mistakes before class. That way you come to class, we'll probably do some whiteboard practice, and you guys will be ready to rock and roll on the quiz. And if you have any other questions, make sure you write those down before class.